What's up, party people? We're back. It's warp season. Four weeks in, we got some buys and sells, and you know I couldn't do this without my main man, Matty Kiwum. Warp season, four weeks of data. Are you ready? I don't know what your list is either. Like, I'm anticipating. You're taking the buys, I'm taking the sells. You're Mr. Feel Good, I'm Mr. Shit on everyone's hopes and dreams. <laughs> what do you got, Matty? What, what are we doing? I'm Mr. Heat Miser. You're, you're the cold miser here, but it's okay. It's a great dynamic, the yin and the yang. It's the balance of life, my friend. But my first warp buy, my first win over replacement player that people just need to be targeting right now in all formats. Doesn't matter if you're a contender or a rebuild. Now's the time to be buying Jaden Reed. First and foremost, you want to be part of the Green Bay offense. These guys are putting up a ton of points. We're seeing them towards the top of the league in yards per game, passing yards per game, points per game, and they haven't even had Jordan Love so far this season. Jaden Reed, as of right now, and, and you know, you could say what you want about places like Keep Trade Cut and other market indicators, but right about now, Jaden Reed is anywhere from 17 to 20. He's kind of in that fluctuating wide receiver 20 range. But if you look at the warp chart, you'll notice one thing about this guy. That .553 WORP is fourth highest amongst wide receivers, eighth overall. Out of all the players in fantasy right now, Jaden Reed is the eighth hardest to replace. He's got 77.7 .7 fantasy points. That's wide receiver four. 19.4 fantasy points per game. Wide receiver six. He's doing it all across the field. They're using him like Debo, but he plays a lot more like Stefan Diggs. And you don't always have to buy low on guys. You just have to get in at the right price point before it increases. And we're only getting started with a big time Jaden Reed season. So now's the time for the everybody, whether it be dynasty, seasonal, it don't matter. Using the warp tool, you'll know right away that Jaden Reed is a screaming buy. Hey man, people were telling you when Bitcoin was twenty five thousand dollars that that was too much to buy it at. Too much. Stay <laughs> too away. Much, too you much. Don't want none of this. The only thing I always have with Jaden Reed is just the usage stats, right? Like the the route percentage, all that kind of comes back to bite. But the fantasy points are definitely there. The explosive points are definitely there. And this was a guy that I was very cool on coming into the season. And he's making me look like an asshole. So hey. I'm with you, man. I got some dudes on my sell list that I'm thinking like, oh, man, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even write it down on my sell list that maybe Jaden Reed might be the pivot. I love it, man. Jaden Reed. Who you got for number two? This is a player that I honestly have been growing quite fondly of this season. I wasn't big on him at all coming to the season. Kind of shocked a few people when we did a video for the AMA a couple weeks ago. Khalil Shakur. I'm buying Khalil Shakur right now. Injury permitting, but it seems like it's nothing serious. Still young, about 25 years old, heading into his third season as a professional, but 13.3 fantasy points per game. He's wide receiver 26. Again, when we look at the, the fantasy indicators, the market indicators, he's popping up right around wide receiver 40. So we're not even talking about a wide receiver three in most markets. But yet, when you look at the warp, 0.367, he's top 20 in that. He's wide receiver 18 in warp number 41 overall not wide receiver 41 overall player number 41 and he's rounding into form to be josh allen's number one guy and the reason why i believe this is sustainable in this type of offense is year to year now we've seen that yards over catch be amongst the tops in the league his yak per game yak per target metrics last year were amongst the top 15 in the league this year 117 yards after catch is fifth most amongst qualified wide receivers He's getting targeted from one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. And per target, three fantasy points per target, that's fifth highest. I know that number's going to come crashing down given the fact we only have four games in, but he's pacing well, he's in the right offense, and he's carving out a role to be the number one pass catcher for a Josh Allen-led offense. Man, I can get behind it. I know I gave you a bunch of shit the other night on the uh, the redraft show when he took him in the sixth round of a dynasty mock draft startup, but... Matty, he definitely doesn't cost that in any other league that you're in. No. Nothing. Nothing. What do you think? Maybe maybe a second it would take to pry him off of somebody? Like, I think a lot of people would just smash the second and go, like, I'm good. It's your problem. Go for it. Most people would be gets very it excited with that. Yeah. A second round pick in Dynasty right now, especially if you're targeting Shakira, you're probably looking at a mid to late second, right? Mm -hmm. And even though next year's draft class has some really good running backs, by the mid to late second, we're not going to be looking at a difference maker like a guy like Shakir. And 
Does he finish as a top 20 warp wide receiver? I definitely think he could finish top 25, given the offense, given the role, and given his ability with the ball in his hand. So I think a second is exactly where I want to be in terms of dynasty trade value. Don't let people get fooled too. Last year's class was one of the best that we have ever seen, but it was buoyed in why people loved their late second round picks this year. Six quarterbacks in the first round, all those wide receivers. This upcoming class does not have that kind of depth. Sorry to say, it does not. Who are we going for number three, third and final? Big buy for Matty Kiwum. My third and final buy, and this is how you know that your boy specializes in the seasonal department because I'm buying Alvin Kamara right now. Seemed like a streaming sell given that he's 29 years of age, but now what we've seen so far is he is a focal point of this Saints offense. 26.7 fantasy points per game to this point. That's running back one on a points per game basis. His analytics as of right now look better than they did last year. I know we all knew his receiving metrics would look good. His fantasy points per games looks great. His fantasy points per opportunities look great. But this year, he's backed into, inside the top 20 on yards per touch. He's evading tackles at a good clip. 3.3 evaded tackles per game this point in the season. And he's already got four breakaway runs. Those are runs 15 or more yards. That's second amongst qualified running backs. And where I think you could find a whole of a lot of value right now, especially in dynasty formats, is the H. Right now in those market indicators like keep trade cut, running back 14. But yet when you look at the .780 warp, and we're using warp on a super flex, a start 11 PPR league, right? Your standard, you know, well, I wouldn't say it's standard, but that's getting to be more popular. This is the warp we're using right now. And he's pushing .8 four games in, running back two so far this season, second highest warp overall just behind Saquon Barkley. He's dangerous, and then all contending teams need to be sniffing around and, and looking to buy some Alvin Kamara shares. Man, too, when the Warp updated this week, I saw, sadly, he unseated my guy Saquon Barkley as the number one player. Oh, oh. Listen, I've been out here. I've been tooting the, the horn of Mr. Derrick Henry for, for as long as I can yes, remember this offseason. And Alvin Kamara is still gaping him. Alvin Kamara is still gaping him. And I'm adamant that if I was a contending team, I would buy Derrick Henry for a first. Why the fuck wouldn't I do the same with Alvin Kamara? Might even get better production. Oh, look, we have two full weeks. So Alvin Kamara, I love that one. All right, Maddie, time for the part of the show that everyone's going to hate, where I pull cold water on everybody <laughs> and make them hate their life. Number one sell for me, based on warp, Mr. Drizzy Drake London. We had extremely high hopes for Drake London coming in the season, and this offense has been putrid. <laughs> There's a teammate of his that also makes the sell list, and I'll get to that one in a little bit, but right now, Drake London, 34th wide receiver in war per game. 34th wide receiver. The keep train cut price does not equal 34th wide receiver production. It equals 18th in the minds of everybody. There is excuse after excuse after excuse, and I wanted to believe all the excuses, Maddie. But if I'm a contending team, four weeks in, there's 10 weeks left to go till playoffs. Let me say that. There's 10 fucking weeks left to go till playoffs. It is time to put your nuts on the table, and you need to get rid of Drake London while his value is still being buoyed up by excuses. Go get you some wide receivers that are actual production. And even if you don't want to do that, set yourself up with a down tier, get you some draft capital, and then go use that draft capital to go buy some of Maddie's buys out here. Right now, his warp per game is in the same range as Jerry, Judy, and Darnell Mooney, and who really gives a fuck about either one of those two guys? Nobody. Woof. Nobody. Woof. He's not delivering in this offense, but he's still valued extremely high. And I looked at some trades on the lab, pulled him up, and a contender, you can easily dump him for JSN in a pick. And by that pick, I mean at least a second or a first. You can dump him for Brian Thomas and, and a pick, even though Brian Thomas is skyrocketing up. And how about this one, man? We don't know what's really going to happen as of this recording with Rasheed Rice situation. It's not good. He's going to miss some time. We don't know how much it is. But I saw a trade on there, Maddie. Drake London for Xavier Worthy at a first. And this was just a day ago. Sign me the fuck up for that one. I'll take your first. I'll go buy Alvin Kamara. I'll go buy Derrick Henry. I'll go buy somebody else on Matty's list over here. And I'll just pocket this Xavier Worthy train. So 
Drake London, number one sell for me, Maddie. Get him off your fucking championship contending teams while you still can, while it's boosted up really, really high. I got to ask you this, though, Mike. How much of this decision was propelled by your love of how Kendrick Lamar slammed Jersey Drake? Uh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not and like us. He's like, and it, the thing about guys like London, when you look at like his analytical profile, it's so bad. Once the league, your league mates catch up, you ain't getting nothing for him. So you got to, I agree, sell now. Get rid of him. All right, on to his teammate. And this, you guys are going to fucking hate me for this one. But B. John Robinson. Keep trade cuts, number one running back in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. You love his game. You love his highlights. But this offense with this Zach Robinson amalgamation of shit that really just looks like the Arthur Smith amalgamation of shit from last year with a quarterback who is sometimes playing as bad as fucking Desmond Ritter was last year. Unless he's playing the Eagles, then he looks like a star. <laughs> but right now, B. John Robinson is the 23rd running back in warp per game. Let me say that again. The number one running back on keep trade cut for everybody is 23rd in warp per game. There are turd burgers ahead of him just dominating him as far as fantasy production goes for your leagues. It's just not justifying and the value is just not matching up. Matty just talked to you about buying a guy like Alvin Kamara. You don't think you could tear down from Bijan Robinson to Alvin Kamara and get a very nice hefty plus? You're insane if you can't. You could probably take Bijan Robinson and trade him for all three of Matty's buys. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. <laughs> Just plug you them into lying, every brother. single one you of your lying, starting brother. spots. <laughs> every single one of them. I'm not saying that you need to panic on Bijan Robinson, but if I'm a contending dynasty team with Bijan Robinson on it right now, I am shopping him. I am shopping him immediately. And I'm seeing what kind of deals come in because, listen, it's kind of dealer's choice out there. I went and plugged in Bijan Robinson deals into the lab. Maddie, I'm in 60 fucking leagues. Which also means I have seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever the fuck it is. Which <laughs> yeah, means all yeah, the people yeah. I'm in leagues with have all these trades that the lab can pull from. It is so hard to find a Bijan Robinson trade. And you know what that means? That means he's worth a absolute fuck ton to a lot of people and they don't yes, want right. him to go. So Bijan Robinson just not really delivering. And if I'm on a contending team, fuck this dynasty thing. I don't care what Bijan Robinson is going to be for me in 25 or 26. I care what happens this year in 2024. And I want that championship. Bijan Robinson, cell number two. Balls of steel. How low are you willing to go, though? How, in terms of your dynasty running back ranks, how low are you willing to tear down? Aaron Jones. Surprise, surprise, Mr. Sombrero didn't make the list of buys. I thought maybe he might be, he might sneak it on there, Maddie, but you took the obvious one at Alva Cabrera. I was looking, I was looking. I was like, oh, Aaron Jones is fucking balling. Funny thing, when I was going through the warp charts, sifting through to see who I was going to buy, I said, oh, Aaron Jones, I jotted him down. And then everything that I was going to sell the folks on buying Aaron Jones, Alva Kamara was just that more so i was like what, do I, what am i doing here what am i doing here? i gotta I gotta go with Alvin Kamara. but yeah if you're gonna go all the way down to you know running back call it 17 18 in dynasty formats you're gonna get a fat second piece that's how you win baby you know who else i would trade him for the other b rob the b rob the guy that's out producing b robber stand up i know you love that one give me brian Let's robinson <laughs> and maddie how many listen i know you get at least a first on top of it what else do you think? You think you get a second first attached to B-Rob for B-Rob? You know, it, the, the, the stars have to align to for that to happen. They have to have multiple firsts, but you're getting a first. And I do, I mean, at this point, given his production, could you get Brian Robinson and Garrett Wilson? Could you get Brian Robinson and Tyreek Hill, Devontae Smith, Jaden Reed? I think you're getting yourself a fringe wide receiver one along with a starting running back. I love the Tyreek Hill one, too, because it's having your cake now and then getting to eat it later, too. You know, they say you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. That kind of deal. A couple you of cake eaters who know what's up. A couple of cake couple eaters know what's eater. up. <laughs> cake eaters. Actually, no, used we to were be... talking before. We we're, we're trying to get all jacked for next year's expo. <clears throat> getting swole. Getting swole. Last one, Matty. Another hot name in Dynasty. Also number one at his position. But you know me. In the land of the blind, the one I'm in is king. And right now, the tight end position is blind as fuck. It doesn't matter if you got one eye or not. You're still an ugly motherfucker. 
Brock Bowers. Sorry, Brock. <laughs> Brock just came off a dud week two. Supposed to smash. No Devontae Adams. And yet it was Jacoby Myers out there corner and all the targets and all whatever the fuck a Trey Tucker is. <laughs> Getting looks. Brock Bowers still plays the tight end position. And until that designation ever fucking changes, I'm sorry. Once you reach tight end one status for me, if you're on a contending team, time to go. Time to go. Why? Because there's an infinite amount of turd burgers out there performing in the relative range that Brock Bowers is performing in warp per game, a la Mr. Crusty Gross Ass Zach Ertz. The only thing boosting up Zach Ertz is he's tied to the greatest quarterback to ever lace up cleats for the Washington Commanders, Hi. Jane Daniels. <laughs> Jane Daniels. So if I can absolutely tear down and just insert insert some other shitty tight end into my lineup every single week and take whatever value I get back, whatever draft capital I get back, and invest in positions that actually fucking matter, I'm going to do it 100 out of 100 times. Brock Bowers, I love you. Tough look for your Georgia Bulldogs this last week against the GOAT Jalen Milrow and the GOAT Milrow, Ryan Williams. My <laughs> oh, man. But... You gonna take another L for me, man. Brock Bowers, thank you for getting the Dynasty tight end one. Appreciate your service. Time to go, buddy. Peace. Let me ask you real quick. You could go tear down all the way to Jake Ferguson. Tear down. What's that second piece look like? How fat of a second piece are you getting if you go from Brock Bowers to Jake Ferguson? That's a two-firster right there, if there ever was one. And you might have a player that has more fantasy points. I don't know if you're getting three first for Brock Bowers. You might. Somebody might be a psychopath and doesn't know how to play <laughs> Dynasty very well. And please invite them to all my leagues that I play in. But two first feels very realistic for Brock Bowers, right? And there'll be people out there on X just touting oh, how you should get Brock Bowers. And Devontae Adams is about to get traded. And oh, well, listen, as soon as Tay Adams is gone, you kind of saw it this last week. What are defenses going to do? Oh, 89, Brock Bowers? Yeah, we're going to fucking cover him, man. Safety here, linebacker? Yep, done. Out of the game plan? Please beat us with Alexander Madison. <laughs> Jacoby <laughs> Myers and Trey Tucker. This It's what's going to happen. I love Brock Bowers, the person. I love his game. He's a fun, he's an exciting one. But, Maddie, you can tear down at almost any other tight end. Any other tight end, man. Think about it. David Njoku hasn't played for the last three weeks. In war per game, David Njoku is basically the same as Brock Bowers off of one fucking game. And that wasn't even a very good one. <laughs> it wasn't nope. even a very good one. So nope. there's infinite options to tear down a tight end, and you don't even have to get super crusty like Zach Hurts or Hunter Henry or insert whatever Eric All fucking meme I'm supposed to have here because he went to Iowa. And I'm supposed to count him as an Iowa tight end. By the way, for the record, Batty, I do not count Eric All as an Iowa tight end, all right? I'm not a scumbag. He only played here for a couple games till he got hurt. He didn't fucking get recruited by Iowa. He came in the transfer portal. He's a mercenary. He's not an Iowa tight end. He's a Michigan tight end. Listen, we all wanted, we wanted Lachey come out last year. He would have been the tight end from Iowa we would have wanted, right? So, That's that dude. No harm, no foul there, my friend. That's all we got, though. Buys? Some sells? Tried to break people's hearts. I got to link up with my dude, Maddie here. Got to have a little whiskey. Man, I finished that whole fucking glass in 20 minutes. That's impressive. <laughs> oh, I'm cooked. I'm cooked. But listen, <laughs> if you want to find your own warp buys and sells, there's no way better to do it. You don't have to wait for us. Go get the fucking warp tool. Warp.life. <laughs> Adam says that's the easiest way to get to it. If not, go to SouthArbitFF.com. Go to the warp tool. Sign up. You will shit on your league mates with this tool. Trust me, period. Koopa keeps innovating this thing all the time. And this is why last year for me was the most successful dynasty seasons I ever had in 2023. Thank you to the Warp Tool. Often imitated, never replicated. Matty Kiwum, anything else for the people before we bounce out of this thing? Just get that damn Warp Tool, people. Get it. All right, we'll see y'all back here. Same time, same place next week. We'll probably be solo again, but it was always fun to come on and do a duo. I haven't done a duo like this, a short one, edited by the GOAT, Brian, in a long time. Hopefully the thumbnail's dope too, Brian. Don't fuck this up. Counting on you. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.